My name is Winter. This is how it works. I would love to meet new people. I'm 17. You're 17 years old? Wanna f you? So these guys would try to have sex with you? Yeah. Did they know that you were 13? No. Men buying girls barely into their teens online. Would you say they were uh, 14, 15? I don't know. You don't know? The sex trade has moved off of the streets and onto the web, and the girls are getting younger and younger. She's a child. It's disgusting. This is how the girl next door gets sold. Las Vegas, Nevada. 35 million Americans come here every year. It's a non-stop party out on the strip, but if you look past the carefully marketed glitz, you're gonna find one of America's dirty little secrets. $89, huh? Teenage girls, some barely past puberty, routinely bought and sold for the pleasure of grown men. And every year, hundreds end up right here at the Clark County Juvenile Detention Facility. How many 13-year-olds do you usually see? A few. They, every once in a while, we get 11, 12, and 13-year-olds. So we're just heading back to the holding room where these girls stay while they wait for the judge to call them and hear their case. How you doing? Uh, this this Hi, is Amber. Amber. Where's everyone from? Chicago. And you? Detroit. From Detroit. And? Washington State. Washington State. So no one here is from Las Vegas. This is called a belly chain, and all the girls have these around them. This is everyday life. I got to deal with it. This, this is, is where we first meet 13-year-old so Selena, just another girl next door turned into a product sold by pimps, said, used by men. Backpage.com? Yeah, I was at Backpage.com. And I went on the track, I, um, all that, I did all that stuff. How old were you? 12. 12? Yeah. She was caught in a casino by undercover police and locked up. According to the law, Selena is a sex trafficking victim, not a criminal. But like most underage girls who are sex trafficked, she has a history of running away from home. And that's a dangerous thing in cities across America where pimps are always looking out for girls who are out on the streets alone. Here, at least, she's safe. What is it like when you're all alone in your room, in, in your cell? It makes you think a lot and you get real depressed, like real depressed. So I just like want to cry. I'm like, I cannot believe I'm in here. Like I always told myself I never get locked up, but now here I am locked up. Selena moved here with her mom from Detroit three years ago. When did you start noticing that there was a problem? I think it, she was about, she was 11. You know, little little things that, you know, a cigarette, a joint, some beer that you think is just gonna pass, and then it just didn't pass. She did great in sixth grade, excellent, A's, B's. And then by the end of seventh grade, it's just the crowd that she was hanging around with and just her whole attitude went, her schoolwork went. Then Selena started running away. Me and my mom got in a fight. And I was like, wait, and I'm leaving. And she was like, okay, and I left. So you and your mom got in a fight. You ran away. You were walking down near the Vegas Strip, and some guy pulls up. Yeah, I was at the bus stop. And then he said, oh, do you need a ride? And I was like, yeah, I do. How much did you like this guy? I liked him a lot. Like, I was, like, a, a, like straight up obsessed. Not obsessed, but I was like, oh, my god. god. He's so cute. And, like, it wasn't like, oh, bitch go give me money. I wasn't like that at first, but then it got like that. She's an absolute ham. Yeah. She is. They live in a suburb outside Las Vegas. And Selena's mother is a middle school teacher. This is her when she was little. Look at how adorable she was. It's just little things that she got along the way. Look this is her face. little Bible thing from Bible school. This is her little angel doll. So it's just little things that she has. Who's Vinny? She said, rest in know. peace, Vinny. I don't even know. You don't even know who no. he is? Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. Richie, no. she's got a heart next to him. No. What do you know about what's been happening to your daughter on the streets? I don't. 
I don't know. I mean, honestly, I don't know what's happening. I only know what she tells me, and she doesn't really tell me anything. You think she's worried if she told you that you might be really upset with her? I think she's embarrassed, to be honest, because I've told her, you know, somebody's going to give you something of too many pills or whatever, and they're going to use you for what they want to use you for, and you're done for. Her mother sent Selena to therapist, tried tough love, but nothing has worked. Selena's mom is certain that if she comes home again, she'll run. She wants to leave so bad that it becomes like a struggle. A couple times before, I'm like, you are not leaving. And you, this is the middle of nowhere. Like, how do you get anywhere? So I followed her in my car. She, like, just sped across to the next stop, and she was gone that fast. Selena was sold by a man and a woman over the website Backpage.com for the standard rate of 300 bucks an hour, 150 for the half. Did you ever want to run away and go back home and see your mom or call the police or someone to help you? If I ran away, I was going to get killed. And if I told the cops, I was going to get killed. Even the littlest things could have got me killed. The littlest mm -hmm. things, they could get anybody killed. And the guys that call you, how how old are they? You know, you don't know until they walk through the door. You walk through their door, like they could sound like they were like 21. You walk in, they're like old and disgusting. Did it make you feel kind of disgusting? It made me feel oh, it made me feel so nasty. I would just want to shower and just oh, it's so disgusting. And it never made me feel pretty not one time. And at this point, how many guys were you seeing a day? Mm -hmm. At th that point, like five, four. Four or five guys a day. But Selena is hardly alone. There are hundreds of thousands of girls just like her across America. And for the first time in the long history of the oldest profession, there's a powerful new tool for people who seek profit or pleasure from underage girls, the internet. Crystal, Samantha, Destiny. Undetected, out of sight, and happening every day in every corner of America. So you pick up the phone, you find a girl you like on Backpage.com, call her and meet with her. How long does that usually take? 30 minutes. So you can get a girl as quick as you could get a pizza? Yeah. Does anyone uh, need a mask? Does everyone have one? We're giving these guys ski masks to conceal their identities. Here you go. There you go. Over here. All right. These men have pled guilty to soliciting prostitutes. None of them pleaded guilty to soliciting a minor. They're attending John School here in Nashville, Tennessee, in order to wipe their records clean. They're going to spend eight hours in class learning about STDs, the effects of prostitution on the community, and the risk of prison time if they get caught again. Raise your hand if you're in your 20s. So we have one, two, 30s, 40s, 50 years old. Okay, we got one, two, three, 60s, 70s, one, Anyone 80s? One. They're everybody. They are rich, poor, medium income. They are every ethnicity. They're married, single, divorced. It is the most diverse crowd I've ever seen for any type of crime that there is. Antoinette Welch is an assistant district attorney for Davidson County, Tennessee. She used to be a police officer who spent almost a decade out on the streets undercover, posing as a prostitute, busting Johns. A lot of these girls that are being pimped out on the internet now are underage girls. By law, they are children. Y'all better be real careful if you decide to do it again, because I guarantee you, you're going to eventually get some underage girl, and you're going to get popped for it. And when you're convicted, you will be on the sex registry for the rest of your life. Think about that. How many of you guys are married? Four, five, six? 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Could you just say one word that describes what you do for a living? Computer programmer. Computer programmer? Auto mechanic. Auto mechanic? Trucking. Trucking. Landscape. Landscaper? Construction. Construction? Retired. Retired? Transport. Transport? Forklift operator. Forklift operator? Okay. Computer. Computers? Computer programmer? Sure. A third of the men in this room were caught buying a prostitute on the online classified site Backpage.com. How, what exactly do you do? Do you do it from your living room, from work, and then from your cell phone? You, you can actually surf Backpage on your cell phone? And, and how many times a week? Two or three. If you don't mind me asking, sir, do you have a family? Yeah. Do, do they know that? No. They, they don't know? But I want those parts of the site to be gone. He's a businessman in his 50s. He's married and he has kids. When some people watch this interview, they're going to be really upset with you. How, how can this guy pay for sex? How can he buy women like commodities? What would you say to that? I feel like I have an addiction. To sex? Yes. I think it's an escape and there's no strings attached. So how long does it take you? Say you pick up the phone, you find a girl you like on Backpage.com, call her and meet with her. How long does that usually take? 30 minutes. So you can get a girl as quick as you could get a pizza? Yeah. Well, Backpage tells us that the girls posting under the escort section aren't selling sex. What do you say to that? <laughs> yeah, you gotta be kidding. You gotta be kidding. What are they selling then? We are on Dickerson Road. This is a known area of prostitution. So this is the track of Nashville, Dickerson Road. Dickerson Road, yes. Kenny Baker is program director for the John School. Over the years, have you seen more or less girls out here walking the track? You know, as times change and the technology moves forward, we're seeing less street level prostitution and we're seeing more of the stuff on Backpage. So they're really using the web a lot more. 13-year-old Selena's pimp sold her to men on Backpage.com out of cheap hotel rooms near Las Vegas. We snuck in some contraband, uh, a Coca-Cola. <laughs> so look at, look at that face. <laughs> so I'm it real quick so she doesn't get in trouble. <laughs> Did they know that you were 13? No. No. Well, the guy I was with at the time told me to tell everybody that I was 19 or 18. So I did. So this guy you were with, was he your pimp? Yeah. Did any guy ever say to you, you know what? You look like you are you might not be 18. Come on, what's your real age? No, because they didn't care. Uh -huh. They didn't care if I was, even if I was like five years old, they wouldn't care because they're having sex with somebody. So they wouldn't care. And this is her in the D.A.R.E. program. <laughs> Who would have guessed? What would you say to these guys who are um, paying for sex with, with your daughter? It's disgusting. I, I, I think the whole, I think our whole society is so out of control with accepting this and saying that it's okay and, it, you know, it is what it is. She's a child. Did you ever suspect that uh, any of the girls that, that you found uh, were underage and lied about their age? Yes. Did you find those girls on Backpage.com? Yes. Mm. And by being underage, would you say they were uh, 14, 15? I don't know. You don't know? They're only thinking about themselves and not about anything else, only their immediate needs. And not, gratifying... so not about these girls? No, they're not even, no, that's a, it's just an object. Well, I mean, I, I believe the, that Backpage is responsible for this. I mean, again, it, sh it should be taken away. The whole thing doesn't have to Just be gone. Just the escort section? Yeah, the escort section, the, the adult section should be gone. So you're saying Backpage just normalizes the whole process? Yes, of, yes. You go on, you buy furniture, you yeah. find a job, you yes. buy a girl. Yes, yes. Coming up, young. 
sweet, bubbly, all things that could indicate she's underage. Do these websites know what's going on? Do they care? What are you guys doing to protect these girls? Look closely at these escort ads on the internet classified site Backpage.com. Can you tell how old these girls are? Step out of a, dream, I was a, child. a couple months ago, Selena's face was on the front of one of these online ads. Her pimp was forcing her to sell her 13-year-old body to strange men for sex. So this guy, your pimp, what happened if you hid some of the money? Then I'll get out of my ass, but he would beat you? Yeah. Selena's real father has been absent from her life. She says that keeps her up at night, writing songs about the dad she doesn't know. <sighs> Don't look at me. Close your eyes. <laughs> I'm not looking at <laughs> okay. you. Okay. Okay, go. All the hoes, daddy, daughter, dances that I had to go to alone. It just made me groan. You wrote that? Yeah. That's really impressive. Really? Who did you write that about? My dad. About your dad? Pimps across America prey on girls like Selena, luring them in with gifts and love and then selling them for sex online. And it's become more profitable than ever. The internet is plastered with lies, but this is one of the boldest, the term escort. Websites like Backpage.com that advertise escorts make it clear that the site is not to be used by anyone offering, quote, sexual favors for money. But come on, we all know what's often being sold here is sex. What would happen when, when guys responded to your ads on Backpage? I was in Motel 6, mm -hmm. so they're gonna be yeah. How many guys a day would you see? Uh, I don't know, it depended on the day, like sometimes like two or three or four. Last year, we investigated the internet site Craigslist. Victims advocates called Craigslist Adult Services section the Walmart of child sex trafficking. We posted an ad to see what was up. So I want to show you how easy it is for these pimps to use Craigslist to sell their girls. We're suggesting with our ad that we could possibly be underage with words like sweet, innocent, new girl in town. This could be an ad for an underage girl. So we're going to see what kind of calls we get. And when the calls came in, there was no question what these guys wanted. Yeah, this is Ashley. What would be the donation for Quickie? 200. I, I do both. Oh, we have another call. Hello. Because I was wondering um, how much will pick up. Excuse me? Uh, how much will pick up? <laughs> 200. What, what do you mean, is everything covered? Maybe I go 150? Excuse me? We can discuss that when you get here. <laughs> Look at the photo on this one. And there's another big lie when it comes to online sex ads, and that's age. If an ad says a girl is, say, 13, it's going to be immediately banned. So pimps sell the girls using code words like young, fresh, innocent. When we took an ad that was loaded with code words to Craigslist founder, Craig Newmark, he was unable to answer a simple question. I mean, what do you think she's selling in her bra and underwear? A dinner date? I've never, I don't know what this is. What are you guys doing to protect these girls? Our investigation helped spark a national conversation and outrage. Attorneys general from uh, all across the nation sent this letter out to Craigslist. They are calling on Craigslist to completely shut down the adult services sections. Just weeks later... Over the weekend, Craigslist shut down its adult services section, slapping a censored label in its place on its website. 
But when Craigslist shut down the adult services section, the pimps and the johns migrated to the next most popular site, Backpage.com, where you can buy a car, a used couch, or an underage girl for sex. Backpage charges five bucks per escort ad, and according to the internet research firm, The AIM Group, Backpage.com's monthly earnings jumped by more than a million dollars after Craigslist took the adult services section down. Backpage is projected to earn more than $20 million from its adult ads alone in 2010. We found cases of underage girls being sold for sex on Backpage.com all over the country. Backpage is owned by the Village Voice Media Group, and chances are you've seen one of their publications. Seattle Weekly, Miami New Times, Riverfront Times. We've been trying for months to talk to top management at Village Voice Media, including President Jim Larkin, about the sale of underage girls on the site. He refused to talk to us. Last fall, Backpage hired Internet Security Advisor Hamu Nagam to implement, quote, a holistic plan centered around preventing criminal activity on our site. What is their holistic plan? We don't know, because Hamu Nagam wouldn't talk to us. On his website, Nagam promised to look into what impactful changes can be made to provide a safer site. The most obvious change, the full-on nudity on Backpage.com is gone. But ads like this are still everywhere. And the men who use Backpage, they haven't changed. How old are you? I'm 17. You sound like you could be my dad. 17? You're 17 years old? What do you think we should do about this? What do you want me to do? I want to you. Coming up. My name is Winter. Tell me if you want it, if the price is right, then I'm here. I post an ad on Backpage.com. Uh, today I'm actually heading out to be sex trafficked as a 17-year-old girl. My client is like, he's worth me. We need to know anything we do, we do corporate. That way we don't have to worry about any type of wood issues, if you know what I mean. I'm going to sell myself for sex on Backpage.com, just like a 12-year-old girl we found was sold on the site. We posted an ad under Escorts on Backpage's Tennessee site, almost identical to an ad used to sell a 12-year-old girl we found. That picture is me when I was a young teenager. I got to tell you, it was quite awkward uh, calling my dad and asking him to send me a picture of myself when I was 14 so I could post a sex ad online. I have a copy here of her exact ad. It says, my name is Winter, and I would love to meet new people. Ad price, five bucks. They posted it online. So there I am at 14. And let's see if we get any calls. Four minutes later, the phone rings. Hello. I tell the callers I'm underage. It doesn't seem to matter. Hello. Uh, this is Alan. I saw your ad on um, Backpage. And I was wondering what your rate. I was wondering if you're available tonight. How old are you, Matt? You sound kind of young. I'm 34. I'm 16. 16. Okay. Oh gosh, we got another one. Hello. What What are you looking for? Sex. Oh, you're looking for sex. Okay. I'm not old enough to drink. I'm 17. I can't. I don't have a fake ID. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. I just got woken up by my uh, pay-as-you-go phone ringing. What's your name? Ronnie. I'm 17. You sound like you could be my dad. 17? You're 17 years old? Yep, I'm 17. 
why would I want to even consider having sex with a 17-year-old woman who is underage? No one needs to find out. That's exactly what I said. What do you think we should do about it? What do you want me to do? Uh, today I'm actually heading out to be sex trafficked as a 17-year-old girl. Hello. Ended up getting a call yesterday from a guy who says he's working for a high-rolling client, a 60-year-old plus guy who's really interested in me. He likes my photos from my ad. My client is my he's running me and sweetie. So anything we do, we do corporate. That way we don't have to worry about any Tiger Woods issues, if you know what I mean. One thing led to another. Now I'm being sent to North Carolina to meet this guy. He just called. I tell the caller that I'm underage, but it doesn't matter. He still arranges the meeting. Hello? I even get a call to set up my hotel room. OK, I'll just have the suite uh, fully stocked. Okay, I'll be discreet. On the way to North Carolina, the caller entices us to keep driving. He just sent me a couple images of a cashier's check they have waiting for us for $35,000. He's been telling me all morning he wants to just prove to me that they're legit. Okay, you got everything? Yeah, I got, got everything so that the check's real and everything, right? Oh, yeah, got it, yes. The hotel was in the middle of nowhere an easy place for a 17-year-old to go missing. So we brought security. So I'm going to be wearing this shirt, and right here is our hidden button cam. You've got entrance to the hotel. OK. You go through a revolving set of doors, and then the main lobby area is in front of you. So we are heading out to the car. The guy who was trying to sell me told me to buy half a dozen disposable credit cards from the local supermarket. Common sense would tell you, sweetie, if you don't get your cards, I mean, you got $30,000 waiting on you. Take them to the hotel. So the main thing is you get what you need to get down, get paid, get in your suite. And he'd transfer all of the money onto my new cards. We scoped out the meeting place and confirmed that this offer was real. I could only afford one card, but I have it here. So whatever we can do okay. now, I could get more tomorrow. He's not going to be able to release anything to you. He's going to have to release the whole 30000 at one time. But since I wasn't about to sleep with anybody for money, we pulled the plug. The point where we stopped is the start for so many underage prostitutes. Next, we'll take you to the most famous legal brothel in America to hear what its owner thinks of these pimps who sell underage girls. Pimps are the worst leeches in the world. And we'll hear from the women who work at the cat house. I've been in the game since I was 13. Women who got started in the oldest profession way too young. Las Vegas Strip, where you can buy tickets to a show, a five-star dinner, and also a woman. If you've ever walked down here at night, you probably heard that sound. It's like all these guys up and down the strip uh, with these cards and magazines. Todo que quiero. Behind the obvious advertising, there's a hidden trade in underage girls and huge hidden profits. According to one study, pimps pull in anywhere from $150,000 to $500,000 a year. We wanted to know more about the business of selling girls, so we met a guy who knows more about that than anyone. Hi, honey, how are you? Because there's a lot of sexual trafficking going on in Las Vegas. Dennis Hoff. He's been called America's pimp master general, but he considers himself a businessman. Hey, I love it. 
and what he does is legal. Show on HBO called Cat House. Hoff is the owner of the most famous legal brothel in America, the Moonlight Bunny Ranch. It's the setting for HBO's long-running reality series, Cat House. People love the sex business, and I love being a part of it. What he doesn't love are pimps. You think pimps just suck? I pi pimps are the worst leeches in the world. It's in Birmingham, it's, it's Charleston, it's everywhere. It's everywhere in America there are pimps that are trying to grab the, the life of young girls and take them away from their families. And what types of money are pimps pulling in? Oh, tens of thousands of dollars a week. A week? Oh, yeah. Oh, ab absolutely. What is it with underage girls? Why do pimps make more money off them? Why are there so many underage girls? They're easily manipulated. They're, under, they're young, they're naive, but the price they pay is, is, is horrendous. We're driving right now to Lyon County, Nevada, to talk with Dennis Hoff and go see his bunny ranch. You know, you hear names on the street, people calling prostitutes, sluts, hoes, whores. But what a lot of people in this country don't realize is that the majority of prostitutes out there started in the business as sex trafficking victims. Hoff says that he wants to set the record straight. Let the public know that life in his legal brothel is a far cry from the lives of most American prostitutes. Come on, girls. Ladies, this is Amber. She's here visiting. Gonna spend some time with you girls. Want to meet you all. They get scheduled every month or two. Come in and make their money and go back home and lead their life. Want me to walk you around and show you everything? Yeah, yes. There's just rooms down here, and the, and the girls decorate them like they want. Yeah, we want people to, to be comfortable. LED, plasma TVs. Yeah, it looks just like a regular bedroom. What is this? This is a, a swing. I don't quite know um, how this works. Woo! You know, it's really easy. It's All great. Right. <laughs> Let's move on to the next room. <laughs> it's, just, it's just boobs in the hallway. It's just boobs. The women here are in the safest and most profitable environment possible for a sex worker. This is used one day a week for a couple hours. They're tested weekly for STDs. They have panic buttons in their rooms that they can hit if a client gets out of line. And they also keep half of their cash. <laughs> Some make six-figure incomes. Have you ever marketed a girl as being just turned 18? Oh, absolutely. But is there really a difference between 17 and 45 weeks and 18 years old? Our congressmen need to work that out. They're the ones that made the decision that in eight, when you're 18, that you can join the military, you can kill people, you can do porn, uh, or, or you can work at the Bunny Ranch. Do you ever worry that girls watch the show Cat House and see how well the girls are treated here and think, wow, I want to be a prostitute, I'm going to be treated that well too, and then they end up on the streets in the hands of a pimp? I don't want anybody to be in the illegal prostitution world. It's, it's awful, it's terrible, and, and they're preyed upon by everybody. So I know you guys are all of age now and you're in the business now legally, but how many of you were sex trafficked underage when you started in the business? Can you raise your hand real high? So we have one, two, three. We counted hands and asked the women to tell us their stories. I'm from Seattle and I started hoeing when I was 16. And I got started in the sex industry when I was 15. And I've been in the game since I was 13. All were effectively sex slaves, controlled by pimps, and all were sold online. What happened if you didn't get calls? If you didn't get any response from Backpage, what would your pimp do to you then? We had to be out on the street, and we had a $500 minimum. And if we didn't make our minimum, then we had to basically stay out there until he told us to come in. Jazzy was trafficked by a pimp named Sweet. I was 15 at the time, and that was when Sweet wasn't so sweet. <laughs> what percentage of the money that you made turning tricks did you give to your pimp? There's no percentage. <laughs> they get all of it. They get all of it. Actually, they get raped out there. I was more scared of I wanted to live than to fight for being raped. So I just, I just kind of sat there. I just kind of laid there <laughs> because I wanted to see my mom and I wanted to see my dad again. <laughs> Virginity wasn't the option where I came from, you know, it was taken from you. And so when you <sighs> when
when you get into the game or when you like have somebody telling you, you know, you can sleep with me for money and you already lost your virginity, it's like, why not? Like, you know, it's like, why not? You know, sex is, it's not as sacred as it once was. When we come back. I want to go home, that's all I want. Selena's fate is decided. Come on. <laughs> Federal law says that if you're under 18 and you're being sold for sex, you're a victim, not a criminal. That's the law, but for thousands of American girls who get arrested every year on prostitution charges, this is the reality. Belly chains, ankle cuffs, a locked cell. Chained up, oh yeah. Susan Roski is a public defender for the girls here. Is it hard for you to see them come out with belly chains like they are real prisoners? It, it's so hard. And I, I can't imagine being the parent of one of these girls seeing it. Society looks at them like they're whores. They're just prostitutes, not seeing them as children that are being manipulated and abused. It's pretty crazy if you think about it, but in counties all across America, the only place to put these victims is detention centers, to lock them up, to keep them from roaming back out onto the streets and back into the hands of their pimps. This is Fritz Reitz, and he's gonna give us a tour of the Clark County Juvenile Detention Center. This is the facility where these juvenile sex trafficking victims are being held. Well, unfortunately, there's not a lot of options in terms of resources and where else alternatives to put for us. The best resource our country has right now to take care of these juvenile sex trafficking victims, it's this. Three inch mattress, cement. They don't have any pictures on the walls. No TV, nasty looking toilets. They're locked in here at night, just like a prisoner. This is where 13 year old Selena, who was sold for sex by a pimp on Backpage.com, is being held. It's the Clark County Juvenile Detention Facility. Nobody thinks that these kids should be locked up, but nobody wants to risk turning them loose. So, well, this is a good example of one. Judge so, William Voy is the family um, court judge in charge of Selena's case. Now. He keeps an old case on his desk to remind him why these girls need to be safe. She was released on the February um, 7th, and she was found dead on um, February 10th. She was murdered and her throat was cut. You can always theorize that, yeah, maybe they'd be alive. But this one, I know it. I know it. So why do you keep this case on your desk every day? I keep it here because it reminds me that if I had that house, she'd be alive. Judge Voy is trying to get funding for an alternative to the jail, a safe house for the girls who cycle in and out of his courtroom. Judge Voy right now is driving us out to an area of town where they've been planning to build a facility for these juvenile sex trafficking victims. It starts right here. It's not a detention center. It's not an institution. You have bedrooms instead of cells. It looks like another wealthy homeowner in Vegas, right? And that's what we wanted to look like. These kids are, are messed up in a lot of different ways, and they need a lot of help. Voy says private donors will pay for the land and the building. All he needs is $700,000 a year from the county to pay for probation officers. But the county won't pay. We can't get to the next level, and it's extremely frustrating. It's not just this county. There are almost no places for these girls anywhere in America. And all the federal funding for sex trafficking victims has gone to foreign girls. American girls have been shut out. Girls like 13-year-old Selena, now stuck in jail. Oh my God, that's the favorite pitch in the world. I love my little sister when anything in the house. Oh my God, I miss her so much. Selena wants more than anything, just to go home to be with her little sister. I was searching for a reason to be reckless. 
Today, Judge Voy and Selena's mom are trying to figure out what's best for her. I want to be with my family. I want to watch my little sister grow up in my hair. My different to when I go home, I swear. For the first time in my life, I'm sorry for the things I've done, and then I do anything to be home with my family. You said that with only one breath. So you're my best judge right here, because you know this child. Of course, I want my child to come home, but we need a plan. I mean, yep. I, it's not. No, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I, okay. They you know she's saying all this. I want to go home. That's all I want. But she's not going home because no one can say for sure that she won't just run away, back to the streets, back to the pimps. So are we gonna be in here for like another month? I didn't even fucking go home. Selena's mother is burnt out. Terrified, Selena will run again and vanish forever. It's horrible. You hear everywhere of kids, you know, being picked up and you never ever see them again. So it's a horrible feeling. And no matter how many times that I talk to her about it, it's just like she's just not getting it. She's not. Selena's mother is a teacher and she's used to dealing with kids. But her daughter is a mystery. You know, just say I have a kid that actually just goes to school and comes home and does their homework and, you know, I watches TV, you know? Mm -hmm. That's tough. I don't want to, you know, take away anything from her because she's great in her own way. It's just, I don't know, I feel like she's lost, to be honest. I do. Selena is now getting help through a court-ordered drug treatment program in another state. But her future is uncertain at best. There are thousands of girls just like her, caught up in an industry driven by lust and greed, now online and better than ever. It's selling the girl next door. Oh.